Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor, here to bring you another video on how to raise your vibration so you can live your best life. And I would just love to reiterate the fact that we absolutely are soul family. I mentioned it a couple videos ago, but only 86% of my viewers are subscribers. So if you are not yet a subscriber, please do make sure you click that button because I am really close to monetization and I would absolutely love to be supported by this work after a full year of posting videos nearly seven days a week. So if you would do me that honor, I would be greatly appreciated. I would also like to reiterate the fact that we connect either through subscription on this channel or through my upcoming membership it is really important for us to be drawn together, to come together, to connect with each other. The time of going it alone is over and it's time to be in community with each other. So I have started a community, it's called the New Earth Construction Team. The acronym actually looks like or sounds like the word nest. So come to the incubator, come to the nest where you can be nurtured and loved, where we will help you heal all of your wounds that might cause self-sabotage or playing small or whatever you back from your purpose. We will also identify your purpose as well as dig into manifestation and how to make a living with your purpose. So I had close to 17 years in the corporate world building products, many kinds of products. I have managed billion dollar portfolios. I have brought thousands of products from idea to actual fruition. So whether you have a physical product or a service or you want an online business, I can teach you how to do all of those things. So the catch to all of that is that's a lot of stuff for me to teach. And typically I've been charging $2,000 for my coaching and course package. But the beauty of a membership is it's only $20 a month, $20 a month. And we will dig into all of these topics. We'll start with your healing first so that we can get whatever these blocks are out of the way that cause you to play small. And then we'll teach you how to find your purpose. Then we'll teach you how to manifest. Then we'll teach you how to make a living with your, your purpose. But in order to do that, it requires that I follow a success path. We have to dig deep and we have to go in sequential order in these issues so that we can fully make sure we are effective in unleashing the human potential, unleashing your purpose, your power, your gifts, your strength, your bigness, your beauty. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to close down the membership. So the doors will open 11-11, November 11th, and they will close 11-22. So if you want to get on the wait list, if you want to be part of the... Um, the, the founding members, so those to be a founding member essentially means you're going to help us build this community. You get to tell me what you want to hear about. You want to, you get to tell me how you want to hear it. So if I'm offering the, the trauma healing course that day, you get to offer suggestions on how we come together. Is it in a Zoom meeting? Are we in breakout rooms? Are we in a big group? Are we in a small group? Um, and request how these things are delivered. So part of being a founding member also means that you get grandfathered in, locked in for life at the initial price of $20 a month. That will go up. It will go up each week as I progress towards the launch and closing date of the group. So if you want to get in, if you want to maintain this price forever, because of course over the years it will also increase, get to me now. So connect to me now, comment below, send me an email, however you want to do it, let me know. Say put me on the wait list. And I will have you on a wait list until November 11th, and then the link will go out to sign up. You will have until the 22nd, and after the 22nd, the doors will close for at least six months and so that we can walk through the success path and really dive deep into all of the issues, getting everybody sort of into the same phase, and then we will reopen the door for a new set, and we'll have mentors, and we have people who can do brain spot to help you heal trauma because it does require somatic therapy and all sorts of goodness. So I'm really excited about this. So it takes a bit to explain that. Hopefully I'm becoming more and more succinct as I, I do, but it's really important. We want you to come to the nest, come be part of the new earth construction team because we are the shift and creating the new earth is up to us. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, and I would kind of want to keep this conversational. I don't claim to have all of the answers on this because I do believe it is a newly emerging um, insight or wisdom. And so I realized that 50.5, 50 50.6% of my channel are men and the remaining 49.4 are women. So this is an interesting conversation. There's a pretty even 50-50 split. I would love to hear from you guys how you feel about some of the the um, concepts or proposals or theories or just questions that I'm working through around 
what the divine masculine looks like. So again, I'm going to keep this very conversational. It is clear to me that we are dealing with a extreme level of toxic masculine toxic masculinity in our society today. Now, I can speak from personal experience. As a female, I have not fully lived my female essence up until the last couple of years. The vast majority of my young life, I was in a wounded female state. And then in my teen years, I shifted into an overly masculine state. And it is clear to me, especially as a woman in the corporate world, that most women in the corporate world, especially, um, but even in the world at large, are operating in a very masculine dominant state that especially as mothers and wives we tend to take on far more responsibility than we should we we put on a, a mothering type approach which ask, actually is very masculine to take care of everything to do things for everyone to manage the children the relationship the house the job the bills all the things it causes us to be very masculine now that's just coming from the female standpoint you add to it the the male standpoint the male has been encouraged to be overly aggressive overly um, critical making fun um, bullying um, very abrasive to to stuff down your feelings um, to make fun of people and and that you are somehow masculine or strong for doing those things and kind of just bundling that up and putting it on the shelf right that's where we're at and it's clear that it's come to a head it's come to a point where this is no longer sustainable and likely women are leading the charge because I don't want to say it that way the, the, there are more women stepping into their feminine today than I have seen historically that we are starting to identify recognize and acknowledge the need for being in our feminine and I do believe that there are some men doing this as well I do see more women than men but of course that again is subjective it could just be my my experience my location things of that nature so again i want to remind you this is a conversation while it's just me on the screen i would absolutely love and be very open to anyone who wants to contact me to have an actual conversation where we just jump on a zoom call record it and post the video because there is something to be flushed out here and i don't claim to have all of the answers and i would love to connect with more divine masculine divine males who are are living this new way of being so kind of what I was getting at we've come to a head it's come to a point it's no longer sustainable especially women are saying I can't I can't anymore right it's killing us literally and so we are shifting more into our feminine well in order to to balance this unhealthy masculine feminine um, dynamic it requires the masculine to come along as well and there are there are many men out there who who are aware of this and working on it or have have balanced it for themselves but I would say I certainly am aware of more women than men okay so also bundle that up put that on the shelf where we're at what is currently about to shift or shifting and then the question of where are we going Right? What does the relationship of the divine masculine and feminine look like? And I will bring, I will propose some things to you from my perspective, the things I'm looking for. If you're, if you're curious about how I would define um, a divine love, check out the video divine love. Um, it, I, I've mentioned too many videos in my videos to, to find you all the links. So if you just do a quick search by mentor divine love, you will find it. And, and I, what I did was present what love looks like, but not necessarily the role of the feminine and the role of the masculine in that love. And that's where my questions remain at this point. Historically, the way I was brought up was the man was the provider, the man had to be um, you know, working all the time, very strong, protector, um, dominant leader, um, almost to a, an oppressive extent 
And of course, this is filtered by or colored by my upbringing but with a narcissistic father. Um, and, and certainly was part of our family lineage and, and what was passed on. What I would like to discuss and, and propose today is how I see or what I would prefer and what I look for in my divine masculine counterpart that I am seeking, right? That very commonly in my experience, there was a sense of wanting to, or yes, there was a sense of my partners wanting to possess me, right? To, to manage, to control, to own, to dominate, to suck from. And that of course is a toxic behavior, but it is partially also filtered by the environment that we live in and the ways that men were told to behave. And it has got to be a question I, you know, not being a male, it's difficult for me to be certain, but I would, I would have to wonder what guidance there is for the masculine right now for the, the males out there and, and how to lead in their divine masculine energy while also balancing that with the feminine. And of course, it's important to note the rise of um, the LGBTQIA plus community, that there is a rise in um, transgender awareness. And I, I'm not going into that. I, I'm, I'm not prejudiced. So, you know, to only you know what's right for you. And I support you and your journey. And I will love you unconditionally no matter what. Right. That's all I'm going to say about that. But I partially wonder if the rise of the feminine has created some of this movement. If there is a significant population, especially of men, who feel the desire and the need to express more of the feminine. And, and how, and this is part of my question, is how does the, the um, I guess you would say straight male, embrace both the masculine and feminine without becoming confused? And so what I would like to propose is, and I realize I'm dancing on a fine line and I really don't want to offend anyone. That is not my intention. I'm not um, making any suggestions. Like I said, I'm asking questions. I want to have a conversation around this. Um, but what I would really love to see in the, the masculine, um, in the man, in, in relationship with the divine feminine is more support that instead of being the head and being in charge and taking control and, and having to carry the, the weight of the relationship on their shoulders and, and the full responsibility of providing, that there is more space held for, for who we are. That if you notice what we've been capable of over recent years and decades of being able to manage everything, with very little emotional or physical support, that we are capable of tremendous powerful things. And that can be intimidating. In other relationships that I've had, it was too intimidating. Either they wanted to own and squash or they were intimidated and wanted to be the man child. And there's got to be a balance, right? So I, over the recent months and, and year or so have stepped into my own bigness in a bigger way every day and I begin to shine brighter and I recognize and I talk a lot about this how we are all big energies we especially if you have experienced complex trauma um, you, you know that people are triggered by you right and so to to allow us to be in our fullness and I, I say that almost for both of us right so the masculine and the feminine to be able to come together and still stand in our wholeness to be whole and complete and complementary, but not um, overshadowing or overbearing the other. And I, when I step into my bigness, I step into my wholeness, I, I express fully, I find I am powerful, I find I am big, and I, I envision um, the, the Amazon women that were in the beginning of the movie, um, uh, Wonder Woman with Gal Gadot, I think. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right, but um, they were powerful, beautiful, strong, gorgeous women. And I think about, and they were a community of women. So I kind of wondered, where are the men? How do the men play into that role? Because that's how I see myself as a powerful, 
strong woman and a big energy, although I'm not big in stature, I am strong. <laughs> um, and I can do all these things for myself, right? I can manage a home, I can run a family, I can be the breadwinner, I can build a business, I can lift weights, I can do all the things that I need to do, I can make myself happy. I am enough. And so then the question becomes, what does that counterpart look like? And I envision someone standing behind me, not fully behind me, but slightly, right? Almost shoulder to shoulder, but just a little bit behind my shoulder. And what I see is that protection and that support and that feeling of I've got your back. And no matter what you do, I support you. I love you no matter what. You do you and I'll do me and I'll be here for you when you need me, but you've got the space to be all that you are when you don't. And really in all ways, always. <laughs> that there is a knowing, there's a deep connection that says I see all of you and you see all of me. And the, uh, of course, the, the song, all of me loves all of you comes to mind, but I would really love to hear, and maybe this is just me talking to the screen and it's okay if that's what it is, I'm still gonna post it anyways, but I would love to hear more about how men who are growing into and embracing the feminine, right? Embracing the emotion, understanding, and I still need to do this video, It's I'll put it on the list next, Emotion is the source of creation. We are creators, we are manifestors. In the beginning was the word, word is vibration, ohm, the sound of creation. It is coming from that emotion, to emote, energy in motion. How could we dare tell men they cannot have emotion? I envision my man to, to feel, to feel strongly and to express it. I envision someone who's as big and as strong as I am, someone who is driven to change the world, someone who has an aligned vision that we could work on together. Now that's likely, some of this is my personality, right? Some of this is just what I'm seeking. But what, what does, what does good look like, right? I have a son and I don't have anyone in our lives that resembles what good looks like for him. And I'd love to be able to show that to him. So if you are a viewer and you're like, lady, I already know who's out there, let me tell you. <laughs> I didn't do any research on this. I think I've, I've searched a couple things, but nothing immediately struck me as, aha, that's it. So truth resonates in the body. So I'm searching for it. And I would love to hear from you if you know of something out there. We need more leaders. We need more beautiful divine masculines to step up and lead the way and to show us you're out there i would say that there if you are a <laughs> if you are a strong man who embraces emotion and is willing to be vulnerable and soft that is the most attractive thing you could ever be and there are thousands hundreds of thousands of spiritual women who are seeking someone like you so know that you are in high demand <laughs> And we would love to get to know you. Um, this is definitely not a dating video, but it's starting to feel like it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end here. Um, yes, please do comment below. Let us know what. How do you define the divine masculine? How do you define the goalposts for what a good man looks like in the future after having removed the toxic masculinity and embraced the feminine, balancing that with your masculine? Okay. It was longer than I expected. I thought it would be a short one. I love you guys. I will see you on the next video. Please do make sure you like, subscribe, and share. If you are not subscribed, if you are part of the 86% who watches videos and does not subscribe, I'd really appreciate that click on this button right here. Otherwise, if you want to continue the conversation, this video is chosen based on your preferences. So enjoy and have a nice day. Namaste. I love you.